hello welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name's Jemima and as you can probably tell by the title of this video I'm gonna be talking all about how to have an amazing European summer on a budget it really feels like a European summer is on every single person's travel bucket list which is like very understandable it's a beautiful place so I am lucky enough to have been in Europe for one summer in 2019 but because I was there for the whole year I was definitely on a budget like I would have loved to go to Greece and like stay at some beautiful cliff top house looking out over the ocean I would have loved to go to like Positano and like drink Aperol spritzes on the balconies but I just didn't have the cash if you're only going for a month sure like save up your money and go all out this video is if you want to have a European summer but you don't have heaps of coin to live out your white lotus fantasy first things first let's just know Europe isn't just the Italian coastline and the Greek islands it feels like it is when you open your Instagram there is so much more to it there are so many other beautiful places almost more beautiful I probably can't say more beautiful but there are places that are just as beautiful way less people and way more inexpensive so I'm just going to share with you the best places that I went uh, during a European summer that won't break your budget first of all I'm going to start off with Albania because I love Albania so much if you know me in real life you you have probably heard me talk about Albania extensively. Even if you just follow me on this channel, you probably have heard me talk about Albania extensively. I spent probably like three weeks to a month there and it's just heaven on earth. It is an amazing country. There's beautiful, beautiful coastlines, like fully feels like you are in the Greek islands. And then there's also like really good hiking inland. There's really beautiful mountains. It's it's amazing. There are a lot of places that you can go in Albania. I kind of traveled all around, um, but definitely, 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 if you want beach vibes, you have to go to Hamara, which is a little town on the coast with the most amazing beaches. Like, it's like swimming in Blue Gatorade. It's stunning. I ended up spending about a week here. I stayed a couple days in an Airbnb because I'd been in hostels for ages. There's pretty good restaurants. There's a few nice bars overlooking the water. Literally everything there is super inexpensive. So a glass of wine is maybe two euros. Two people going out to dinner, a whole meal with wine is probably like 10 to 15 euros. It's so good. Like I kind of just want to go back and live there. If you are after more of like a party vibe, then definitely go to Saranda, which is a couple hours south of Hemara. And this is where you can get the ferry from here to Italy or from Italy to here. So heaps of Italian tourists come here because it's really inexpensive and the beaches are stunning. So that's definitely more of like, there's more clubs and there's more dancing and there's more bars on the water. Still a great place but I wanted something more chill which is why I spent more time up in Hamara and while you're in Albania if you like hiking you definitely have to go to Tess and do the hike up in the mountains up there I did videos of every single thing I did in Albania so you can find those I'll link them all down below if you take anything from this video though please just go to Albania even if you just go for a few days even if you go for a few days and you end up staying for a month, it's so good. I love it. And I reckon it's going to get like really more popular very soon because I'm pretty sure they're going to be joining the EU. So it's definitely going to like get more popular. Next up is Montenegro. It has some really beautiful beaches and also again a really beautiful national park if you like hiking. So I didn't spend much time on the beach because I came here kind of at the end of summer so I'd spent ages like at the beach on the coastline so I wanted to go inland and go hiking which was stunning. But if you want coastline there are three places that you should definitely go. Kotor which is probably like the most famous you'd probably recognize it from pictures. It's a little it's not on the coast, it's on like a bay and it's this beautiful old city kind of up on a hill and it's got this stunning old town and you can go out on like boat trips out on the water. I stayed at a hostel and they organize boat trips out pretty much every day. You just like drink and swim and eat and it was so much fun. That's a really beautiful little city. And then probably like an hour south of there, you'll find Budva on the coast and it's definitely more of a party Kind of town with more like bars and clubs and late night kind of stuff and then there is a beach called bar beach which is i think probably the most maybe the most touristy beach in montenegro but it's a classic like sandy beach nice place to swim the one thing i heard from so many people when i was traveling was to stay at this hostel called the grove 
um, which is right near Bar. And I didn't go because I didn't have enough time, but it looks amazing. I probably had like 10 separate people tell me to stay there. So if you go to Montenegro, do what I didn't do and go stay at the Grove. Okay, this next one isn't quite beachy, but I have to add it because Budapest is probably my favorite city that I went to when I was in Europe, mainly just for the vibes. Overall, the vibes in Budapest are immaculate. There is amazing architecture. The people are friendly. The food is delicious. The wine is one euro a glass. So like I probably should have led with that because that's really the whole reason I loved it. They have these bars. I can't remember what they're called. I'll have to look it up and put it here. But basically whenever there's like an abandoned building, they kind of do like pop-up bars in these old buildings and they're sick. They're so much fun and there's heaps like all around the city. And I just had so much fun. I stayed in the crappiest, shittiest hostel because it was like 10 euros a night. It was definitely like a party hostel. I was the oldest person there by at least like five or six years, but I just had so much fun. Like just going out, met a few people on like a walking tour. So we just went to like bars every night. We went on a really fun like boat cruise along the water. It's a perfect place to go if you want to party, but you don't want to spend too much money. Go to Budapest, party there for a couple days and then go down to the beach in Albania and like sleep it off and like lie out on a hammock you know like if I was gonna live somewhere in Europe I probably choose Budapest because it's just really cool like yes the partying is fun but it's also just a really nice city to walk around because of the architecture and the vibes and the food and the people and there's like a river running through the city it's just nice all around okay, next up Croatia this is definitely not novel or <laughs> you know out of the blue everyone loves Croatia everyone goes to Croatia especially in the last couple of years I think it's really gone up as a holiday destination so i went on a sailing trip um because if you're going to Croatia, you got to go on a sailing trip. Yes, this isn't like super cheap, but if you're gonna go to Croatia, 100%, 100% do a sailing trip, it's worth it. I went with Bus About, it was so much fun. We did a seven day trip from starting in Dubrovnik, went up, looped around, and then back to Dubrovnik. So good, highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, and then I probably spent like three weeks just sort of traveling around the rest of the country. Dubrovnik and Split, are very touristy so they're a bit more expensive they're nice don't get me wrong but i preferred other parts of the country i spent a couple days in a little town called shibenik which is kind of just north of split i'm pretty sure we got the bus there it's a really quiet sleepy old town it looks very much like those italian seaside villages like in luca and in the white lotus and it's right next to a national park that has really beautiful beaches for swimming and like there's a lot of hiking i think we rented bikes one day and like kind of explored the area really good food i remember there was a really good gelato place that we went to every day really recommend that again if you want like a more chilled out summer vibe because there were probably a few bars but it wasn't like party if you want to party when you're in croatia you got to go to well split and dubrovnik also always have like you know parties going on but there's this island called havar which you can get a ferry to from split i'm pretty sure and that is party city oh my gosh when we were on the sailing trip we spent a night like docked there and we went out and it's nuts it's like full clubbing there's this bar there that's really famous for their tequila boom boom because you put a helmet on the bartender gets like a cocktail shaker pours in tequila and ice and then wax it on your head like on your helmet to like shake it up and make it cold and then you do the shot it's it, it, like it would be illegal in australia but um it was really fun so if you want to party go to Havar or just do the croatia selling trip really recommend that lastly i'm just gonna give some props to greece i know i said that the greek islands are very like expensive and overdone in a european summer however don't forget about mainland greece so I went to Athens in June to meet up with some friends and then they were going on to Santorini and a few of the other Greek islands, which I really wanted to go to, but it was just going to cost me so much money. I think the cheapest, crappiest hostel was going to be 50 euros a night, whereas if I stayed on the mainland, it was 20 euros a night. Plus getting the ferry out to the islands and then all the food and the bars and everything out there, like... My friends were there on a two week trip, so it's fine for them. But for me, who was traveling for a whole year, I just couldn't 
justify it. But I still wanted to see Greece, right? So after Athens, I just stayed on the mainland and I did some hiking. Like I went up to a place called Meteora, which has these beautiful monasteries like perched on cliff tops. That was awesome. Then I went and climbed Mount Olympus, which was really good. But if you're not into hiking, just skip that. Um, there are some really beautiful beaches just south of Athens that you can go to that look almost exactly like the Greek islands, but are way cheaper. But what I did is I went to this city called Thessaloniki, which is in the north of the country. It's kind of like Athens, but just way more chill. It's a university city. So I think there are like five or six universities there. So it's just got like a really young, like buzzy kind of vibe. And it is also on the coast. So while the city itself doesn't have beaches, it's only, I don't know, 20 minute drive to get out to some beautiful beach areas and you can get the bus so you can get you know, taxis and whatever. But I just loved this city. It was so, I don't really know what the right word is. It was just like so full of energy. And I met so many fun people there. And every night we'd go out and then we'd meet like random people who lived there. They'd be like, oh, come with us. They'd take us to this like weird rooftop bar that you can only get to through like a parking lot. Or they would take us to this restaurant down an alleyway that you'd be like, there's nothing down here. And then you'd go and you'd eat the best food of your life. I do love Athens. Athens is cool in like a history sense, whereas Thessaloniki was so cool in like a culture and just getting getting the vibe of Greece kind of sense. I really, really loved that. So those are my top places. If you're kind of like trying to figure this out on a map in your head, like where does it all fit in? Basically what I did is I went from uh, where did I start? Basically my route, I did like a few other things in between, but basically I went from Croatia. I think I flew from Croatia to Athens because that was just the cheapest way to do it. Got a train and a bus to some hiking and then through to Thessaloniki. From Thessaloniki, we got a bus to Albania. Albania spent like three weeks going around there by bus and then up to Kosovo and then from Kosovo to Montenegro. This is making it sound really confusing, but it's not. <laughs> this, it actually kind of all fits like this. Um, and then from Montenegro, um, was there anything else I mentioned? Oh yeah, Budapest is like very much like back up. I mean, it's not that far. It's like probably an hour flight, but in the scope of like Europe, Budapest is like the outlier there. Um, but all those other ones I mentioned, you can kind of do in a loop if you wanted to do them all. If you know me, you know that like one of my favorite things to do is give people travel recommendations. So if you end up planning on going to any of these places, please like hit me up, reply in the comments, slide into my DMs on Instagram, and I will give you all my recommendations for like food and drink and places to go and beaches and et cetera, everything. Whenever I go somewhere, I have a huge Google doc of every place that I want to go to and that I do visit. Um, and I keep them all logged so that when someone says, hey, like, do you have any recommendations? I can be like, yes, I do. And give them like a hundred places that they need to go to. So if you end up going anywhere to any of these places I've mentioned, please hit me up and I will give you my list. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you are planning a trip to Europe, I hope you have the best time in the world and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.